Good morning again, everybody, or good afternoon or good evening, whenever you're watching this. Again, we're going through a new set of devotionals this week talking about the different attributes and characteristics of God, the things that make God essentially God. And yesterday we looked at Psalms 139, 1 through 6, and we looked at how God is omniscient, that He is all knowing. And that this is something that can bring us comfort in life, that when we're struggling with God's forgiveness, that he's not surprised by our sin. Or maybe uh, we're struggling with all the, the chaos and the turmoil of suffering in this world, that God knows that these things were going to happen. And so when we experience the 2020s of life, that they don't take God by shock and they don't take him by surprise. But we ended with the question of that if God knows all these different things, then why didn't he do something about it? How come he can't uh, stop them from essentially happening? Now, I'll be honest right off the bat that when it comes to the question of suffering, that we don't always have all the answers to it. There's some mystery here. But there's two different options that we can choose from when we face the 2020s or the sufferings in this world. And they're this, that we can either run towards God or we can run away from God. If we run away from God, then I can promise you that we won't ever get the answers of what's going on in life. But if we run towards him, then we can start to make sense of some of the things that are going on in this world. And so to kind of answer that question of why would God know these things and not stop them, I want to be a little unconventional and I want to answer it with another question. Is that, is God powerful enough to use these things for good? Now, before we, we get into answering that question, today's attribute is God's omnipotence. That God is all-powerful. And the verses that we're going to read from are in the very beginning of Scripture in Genesis 1, 1 through 3, where it says this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. God said, let there be light, and there was light. You see, we can clearly see in these verses that God is all-powerful, that when he says something, it comes into existence. This is what we call ex nihilo, that God took nothing and he created something out of it. This reminds me uh, of a joke that I heard growing up that there were these three scientists that wanted to challenge God and to say that we have the same kind of power that you have. So we are going to create life. So one of the, the scientists came before God and he, he put a, a jar of dust. And he said, okay, God, as you recall, you turned dust, you turned the dust into life and we're going to go and do the exact same thing. And so, as he's about to perform uh, this experience, uh, this experiment turning dust into life, God intervenes and he says, whoa, 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 whoa. Why don't you get your own dust? You see, God literally took nothing and he created life with it. And this is an awesome truth that God is all powerful to create nothing into something. So if God knows everything, including the future, why doesn't he stop the suffering? You see, he is so powerful that he can literally use the worst things in this world and turn them into good. Whether it's the coronavirus or the flooding up in Midland. And essentially this is the heart of the gospel that, that Jesus would relate to us in suffering on the cross and he would experience the greatest form of suffering, which is death, which is separation from God. And he would cry out on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But he's so powerful that he used the darkest moment in history for good. That three days later, he would rise from the grave. You see, church, the same power that lives in Jesus lives in you and I. The same power that raised him from the grave is inside of us because of the Holy Spirit. That God could 
take nothing and say, let there be light and there would be light. And so he's saying that today as the church, as we look around at the suffering in this world, that he would say, go and be the light. God's omniscience can bring us comfort, that nothing ever surprises God, but God's omnipotence in our life can help us to be part of the greatest force in this world that has ever existed to fight suffering. And again, instead of looking inward or outward, let's look upward at who God is and his attributes. That he would say, let there be light and we would be an agent of hope in this world. That today when Jesus says, let there be light, that we would be light in the presence of darkness.